Today, you are going to learn what the difference between tags and segments are inside a ConvertKit, when to use them, and how you can apply them in a real life situation in your own business. I'm Jason from NurtureKit, NurtureKit.co. And one of the biggest questions that comes up, especially with clients and new users to ConvertKit is, what is the difference between tags and segments? Aren't they very much the same? And they are similar in many ways, but before we dive into it and I show you exactly what the difference is, I want you to think at the highest level that a segment is a bucket and tags are balls that you're actually going to put into that bucket. See, a segment is built on a set of criteria that can include tags, but also any number of other things. It could be custom fields, it could be other segments, it could even be specific email addresses. So before we dive in here, I just wanna be crystal clear. This video is not about segmentation. I do have another video on that. What this video is going to do is simply answer the question, what is the difference between segmentation and tags, or segments and tags? All right, so why don't we go ahead and let's dive in. So first, let's walk through what a tag is and how it's applied. So think of a tag as an on-off switch. It, either the subscriber gets it or doesn't. It, they took some action for the tag to be applied or didn't take an action and therefore the tag wasn't applied. So first, let's, let's go ahead and create a tag called clicked sales page. So on the subscriber page, you scroll down, you click on the create a tag link, and let's just say clicked sales page. So if you're looking for why I name tags the way that I do, I do have another video on that. Um, so go check that out. The uh, card or the link will be in and around here somewhere. Um, but <clears throat> we just created that tag. Now let's go into the subscriber and most likely you're going to have a visual automation or a rule that applies the tag. But for the case of simplicity here, let's just go ahead and say, we're going to manually apply the tag that we just created to this individual person. Basically anybody that now has this tag, you can send a broadcast to, you could trigger an automation, you could trigger a bulk action and so on and so forth. So what we're going to wanna do is actually bring them into a segment and show you what that looks like. So we go back into subscribers and let's go ahead and create a segment called hot leads, okay? So hot leads. And as you work through this, you wanna think about, okay, I have that tag called sales, you know, clicked sales page. Right. I may have other tags that define what a hot lead consists of, right? So first thing is we're going to say subscribe to that tag. And you can see that we have that one subscriber there. Let's say for the, this, the sake of this example, another hot lead has a tag called visited contact page. The way that segments work on a search is you can match any of the following criteria. So that, that makes it an or statement. So they can have this tag or this tag. You can also make it such that they have both tags applied, which makes it an and condition. And you can see that there's no subscribers for it or matching none of the following. So for the sake of this, it's going to be in any because they're a hot lead and if they clicked on the sales page or they visited the contact page, I want them as a part of my hot leads segment. Now I can create a broadcast around this particular segment, which gives me some flexibility because anytime we add something new to the business that signifies a hot lead and then subsequently put that back into ConvertKit, all we need to do is go into this hot lead segment, click on edit, and then add that new criteria, right? This means that I don't have to remember all of the particulars around what I've designated as a hot lead. 
when anytime I create a broadcast. So I would just say, I want all the recipients to be in this particular segment. So this is the first way in which you would want to use segments. And I like to call it a cumulative segment. This is the case where the number of people inside of your segment go just continue to go up because it's just a total number of people. Now let's take, for example, this segment and create it as a fluid segment. So this is a second type of segment that you would maybe want. These could be areas of the business that people flow in and out. If you think of it like somebody coming into your email list, they're getting a welcome sequence, right? You might want to know how many people at any given time are in a welcome sequence versus a pitch sequence or your long-term nurture sequence. These fluid segments would go up and down depending on any given day. So how we would create that uh, is essentially if we take this hot leads segment, <clears throat> if we create it as an active hot leads, right? So these are people that are in the moment active because they engaged with us in some level, right? We want to think about from the perspective of if they don't take action, how do they move out of this, right? So in this active hot leads segment, just because they visited a contact page doesn't necessarily mean that they're active. But if they click the sales page or booked a call with us, we might want to essentially say after a period of time, let's say a week, let's remove that tag. So we have an automation that goes ahead and does that, right? So now when people come in and out of clicking on your sales page from your emails, you can have an automation that says, pull them out of this after a week. Uh, and then you can start to see how many active hot leads you have on a given basis. So the clear answer to the question at the top of this video, what's the difference between tags and segments is that you would apply tags to a subscriber because that subscriber took an action to get that tag applied to it. Then you would use segments to group subscribers together based off of a set criteria, which can include tags, but can include other things as well. If this was helpful, click that subscribe button, click that bell notification so that you get a notification every time a new video drops. And remember, if you treat your list like humans, amazing results will happen.